Julia MacDonald, Dublin Central. A courage, as we meet this weekend the process of balloting public sector workers across the state on the Croke Park 2 deal is drawing to a conclusion. This deal, which aims to cut a further €1 billion Euro from the public sector pay bill, has been described by government as equitable and fair. In truth, it's anything but. The government has yet again failed the fairness test, treating those at the top on excessive pay with kid gloves, while dipping its hand into the pockets of low and middle income workers yet again. The mood music for Croke Park 2 set by government and sometimes parroted by others is that public sector workers are a protected species, a pampered lot. So let's today put to rest that lie that suggests that public sector workers are somehow sheltered from the struggles that we all face. This is a lie deliberately propagated to pit workers against one another, taking the heat off the real culprits, the real waste in the system, the failure of Fine Gael and Labour to clean up Fianna Fáil's mess. So here's, here's the reality. One third of our public servants earn the average wage or less. 85% of the public sector work workforce is made up of low and middle income workers. 10% of those in receipt of family income supplement, which is paid to people only on poverty wages, work in the public sector. On average, public sector workers have taken a pay reduction of 14%. And in the case of new entrants, pay has been reduced by as much as 25%. Now there is a small number of people at the top that are overpaid and overpensioned. That is the truth. Look no further than on Taoiseach or on Tánaiste. Look at the ministerial ranks and their secretaries general for ample evidence of that. And Croke Park too was an opportunity for government once and for all to deal with excessive pay at the top. This was their chance and they blew it. They won't deal with the issue. They won't act fairly, whatever the rhetoric. Indeed, they have consistently poured scorn on Sinn Féin's demands that runaway pay and pensions must be reined in. So consider this. Former Tishi, Tanishta, and ministers on pensions of as much as 150 grand will see a measly 5% cut to their inflated incomes. So, what does this mean? Well, it will leave unfortunate John Bruton of Fine Gael with only two and a half grand per week to live on. Ah. It will leave Labour's Dick Spring with only 2,200 euro to scrape by on. Ah. And as for poor old Brian Cowan, well, he's just gonna have to struggle on on 2,700 euro a week. I think you'll agree, a truly appalling vista. Meanwhile, meanwhile, workers on the front line, a nurse, a Garda, will take a hit of 8% and in some cases higher. Increments will be frozen, flexible work arrangements will be undermined, a, work, a move, by the way, that will worst affect lower paid women workers. Now, how's that for fair? No prizes for guessing who will be left worrying about paying their bills. Labour and Fine Gael broke their own pay caps to pay their special advisers over the odds. The advisor to the Minister for Social Protection, you know the one that cut child benefits, that cut benefits for people unemployed, that cut the back to school clothing allowance, yeah, that minister. Well, the advisor guiding that minister in these decisions is paid more than the Prime Minister of Finland. And this is just one example 
of government protecting the upper echelons. In total, they have broken their own pay cap on 12 separate occasions. Now, if this is how fairness looks <coughs> through the eyes of Gilmore and Kenny and their cronies, we can only pray that we never witness their version of unfair. <laughs> They have subjected workers and their unions to duress and threats. Take this deal or we'll really hurt you. That's been the message. And then they get all sensitive. The guardy and the teachers hurt their feelings. They weren't sufficiently nice, sufficiently polite at their conferences. They aren't prepared to roll over. Frontline workers are at the end of their tether, they're speaking out, and I say, good on them. <laughs> there had been a marked reluctance by government to comment on Croke Park too. They said they wanted to give union members space to consider the deal. What they meant was that they were giving the deaf ear to criticism of the deal. And then, in rides, Brendan Howland, the Labour Party Minister for Croke Park too, waving a big stick. And he's not even a stick, if you see where I'm going. <laughs> there was Brendan. There is Brendan talking tough, showing who's boss, deploying rhetoric worthy of his blue shirt bedfellows. Now, if by chance, Minister Howland, if you're tuned in, Brendan, put the sticks away and play fair. For people who are struggling by on low wages in the private sector, people who may not be all that interested in what happens in the public sector, remember these cutbacks, attacks on public sector workers and reductions in staffing numbers affect the services that we all rely on. They are the reason why you wait months for your disability allowance or why your child can't get that long-awaited health appointment. For employers, especially in small enterprises, remember this, every euro taken from the pocket of a middle-income public servant is a euro out of your till. You see, we're all in this together. The cuts and changes in Croke Park too are concerns in the first instance for public sector workers and their families. But the consequences of this deal will have implications well beyond that sector. The real pay issue, as we know, in the public service is the issue of pay equity. Will the government deal with that? Not on your life. The government of political reform, as they choose to cast themselves, won't upset that apple cart. They're happy to leave those at the top cashing in on salaries in excess of the French president. Trade union leaderships have taken differing views on the deal. Many of them have called outright for its rejection, and others have chosen to support it. Now, whatever their reasons for support, whatever rationale they advance, let no one pretend that this deal is based on fairness or equity or any of the other honeyed words of government. A charge of scaremongering has been levelled against the alliance of trade unions opposing this deal. Scaremongering, really. Since when can defence of workers' rights be described as scaremongering? By what definition does resistance to cuts and austerity amount to scaremongering? Would it not be fairer, more accurate to say, that those who seek passage of this deal with the pass it or the government will get you line are they not the ones who are much closer to scaremongering? Fine Gael and Labour, like Fianna Fáil before them, 
represent a political consensus for cuts. They can't see, they refuse to see beyond austerity. Workers and their unions belong with the rest of us. Defending citizens' rights to public services, defending workers' rights, stronger together, fighting for our future. Let the message go out from this Ardesh that we in Sinn Féin, we Republicans are up for that fight. Join with us. Thank you.